Hi, and welcome to the Big Bear Homestead. Today is episode number 11 in the Predator Control on the Homestead series. So today, we're talking about squirrel. All right, so what is a squirrel? Well, a squirrel is nothing more than a mid-sized rodent. And in this video series today, we're only going to be covering the three major types of squirrels that we have here in the United States, which is your ground squirrel, your tree squirrel, and a flying squirrel. But what makes these guys a predator? Okay, so before we get into why they're a predator, let's describe the three squirrels that we're going to be dealing with here in the lower 48. Your tree squirrels, they're more like your gray squirrel, your red squirrel, your fox squirrel. They spend most of their life in trees. Your ground squirrels, they kind of look like the, the gray and red squirrel, but they live in the ground. Now, your flying squirrel is typically a tree squirrel. The only real difference is the flying squirrel is more of a nocturnal squirrel. He's smaller in size and he has extra flaps of skin between his hind legs and his upper arms that fold out and when he jumps, he can glide. So now that we know the three types of squirrels that we're talking about, what do they eat? Okay, so what does a squirrel eat? Well, a squirrel is an herbivore, mostly. So, nine times out of 10, he's eating fruits, veg, nuts. Occasionally, he may eat an insect. Now that is more your flying squirrel than your gray and red and ground squirrels. I mean, they'll occasionally grab one and eat one. But your flying squirrel's pretty hardcore on insects. Now, with that being said, yes, that does make him a little bit of a predator to the homesteader because They'll be stealing our pecans, our walnuts, some of our soft fruit, and even some of our vegetables out of our vegetable garden. But what really makes him a predator to people is the plain fact that he is a rodent. And a rodent loosely means to gnaw. His teeth are constantly growing. But I mean, he has to constantly be chewing on something. And that makes him a predator to us because now he is now a danger to us because if he gets into our attic, into our barn, into our shops, and we have electrical wires, they'll start chewing on those and they can cause a fire. 98% of all house fires that have a unknown cause, as the investigation goes on, 98% are caused by some type of a rodent getting caught on an electrical wire and then basically electrocuting himself to death and then catching on fire, catching the insulation on fire in your attic and so forth. So with all of that being said, how do we know if we got squirrels in our house, in our barn, and what can we do about it? Okay, so what are some signs that you have squirrels? Well, unlike any of our other predators, tracks and scat are gonna be next to impossible to find. So we're not even gonna focus on that at all. Not even gonna waste your time. In your fruit patches and in your vegetable garden, things to look for is small dug holes, about the size of a quarter. Um, look around your root vegetables, look around the base of your grapevines or raspberries, stuff like that. If you're talking about in one of your structures, your house, your barn, something along those lines, okay. Now, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the gray and red squirrel first, and then we're gonna go to the flying squirrel because it's different signs. First thing you wanna do is pay attention to your roof line. You're gonna be looking for scratch marks, chew marks. You're gonna be looking for a hole about the size of a baseball. Spend the extra time and the extra effort. You have to, you may have to get up on a ladder, but pay special attention to your luber vents, uh, gutters around your, when you get into your gutters, 
Look at that ridge line, especially in the corners. Uh, if you have two roofs that meet like such, look in that hole right there in that corner. They'll get back in there, they'll get tucked back in there because they're safe from any predators, any type of raptor from swooping in and getting them. They can sit in there and chew and gain access. If they gain access to the soffit box, they can get just about anywhere in your attic. So let's say you've walked around, you've got up on ladders, and you can't find any entry points. But yet, first thing in the morning, and in the, right at dusk, you're hearing all kinds of noise in your attic. So take a trip up into your attic. If you have blown insulation, if you see game trails, little paths, all through your blown insulation, you've got the gray squirrel or the red squirrel. Now, let's switch gears for a second. Let's talk about the flyers, the flying squirrels, your nocturnal squirrel. One of the major differences between the gray squirrel, red squirrel, and the flying squirrels is the fact that the flying squirrels are nocturnal. Another major difference is Usually, if you get a gray squirrel in your house, nine times out of 10, and I mean like 9.9999999999, it's going to be a female, and she's come in your attic to make a nest and deliver babies. And she'll have anywhere from a single to triplets. With the flying squirrels, they're more of a colony-based squirrel, and you can have anywhere from two to 202 in your attic any, at, all, at any one given time. Now, with the gray and red squirrel, I said you would hear noises in your attic in the morning and in the evening. With the flyers, anything goes. Anytime, you can hear it in the morning, you can hear it late at night, you can hear it in the middle of the day. You can hear it just about any time. Now, one of the things when you go up into your attic that's a major difference because of the size of the flying squirrel you won't see hardcore pass in blown insulation like you do with the gray. You may, you may not, but things to look for are holes like tunnels in your blown insulation about the size of the old mag lights. Remember the old black mag lights that the cops used to carry around a lot and they were like that long, but they were like that big around? You'll see those all throughout your blown insulation. Now, another thing that you may find is the flying squirrel's toilet. They will only go to the to the restroom and use the potty in that one specific spot in your attic. If you can find that, you're golden. It can be challenging to find sometimes, and sometimes it's right out there in the open, and there's no real hardcore picture for me to show you guys what flying squirrel feces looks like, because it just looks like little, little pellets, but it's very moist, so it clumps real together. So it just looks like a big black mob or blob blah, right there. Because um, it really depends on the size of the colony that you have in the attic, how big that toilet area is going to be. Now, entry points for your flying squirrels is going to be way different than your entry points for your gray squirrels. Your flying squirrels, most of the time, they only need a, a hole the size, anything bigger than a quarter of an inch. Now. Most houses today, especially here in the South, are built with what they call a construction gap. Now this construction gap is to help ventilate the attic during our hot summers that we have down here in the South. Not familiar about up North, I don't know if you guys have it or not, but it's definitely something to look into, especially if you have gutters. Usually when you have a construction gap here in the South, you have a gutter in that area, the flying squirrel will land on your roof, get in the gutter, and just dip right in. He doesn't have to chew on anything. He can just come and go. Your louver vents is another thing they don't have to do anything with. They just come and go. Now, if they do have to sit there and chew, their hole will be about the size of a golf ball, between a golf ball and a baseball. Anywhere in that, in that size range. So, now that we know what to look for to see if we've got them, and that's just say that we've determined that we've got them. What do we do about it? Okay, so now we figured out that we've got a squirrel problem. What are some of the things that we can do about it? 
Well, first off, let's talk about what we call in the nuisance wildlife removal business, exclusion work. That is the absolute best thing to do, whether you have them or you don't have them. If you don't have squirrels right now, you really need to pay attention to this part and go ahead and, and do a preemptive strike against the squirrels and go ahead and exclude your house so they can't get so they can't get in there to begin with. Save yourself some headache and some money later on down the road. Now, as you can see behind me, there's these two louvers right here. So well, I have the triangle louvers on my house. You may have octagon or square, rectangle, but basically a louver vent is this triangle thing that has all the slats that lets the air come and go out of your attic. Again, I don't know if this is more of a southern thing or if you guys have them up north as well, but this is definitely a entry point for squirrels. And what you wanna do is take, I'm gonna show Ladessa right here holding this. This is what they call quarter inch galvanized hardware cloth. Now, you take this hardware cloth and you ex basically form cut it to fit whatever louver that you have and secure it to the outside, not inside your attic, but outside. Now, the reason why you do it this way is if you do it on the inside, then you just created yourself a whole world of another problems with another nuisance wildlife predator that we are going to um, talk about later on, and that's bats. You just made a bat house, and you don't want bats living in your attic. So you ex also, by doing it this way, you're also excluding bats from getting into that louver. You form cut it, pull it tight, screw it in there, and as you can see, it's not really an eyesore. The quarter inch galvanized hardware cloth bends in real nice. If it's still too much of an eye bother to you, you can paint this galvanized hardware cloth to the same color as your louver, and then you really won't see it at all. Now, this next piece that she's holding is what we call, in the South, we call this flashing. Um, it's basically just aluminum that you can form fit to cover or repair any hole that you may have. Um, because if you just pull out the wood and put new wood in there and you didn't catch the squirrel that was chewing, guess what? She's just gonna come right back and chew some more on that brand new wood. Now what you can do is replace that wood and then this aluminum flashing, at least down here, they have it in a brown or a white where you can flip it on either, either side. So if you have brown house, obviously then you could do your best to match it, fade it in. But I use mostly of that where in your areas, like right up there in the corner, where the two roof lines meet, where you got that pocket in there, that's not really seen by your neighbors or visitors coming into your home. You just, the squirrels know it's there and they sit there to chew. Because remember, we talked about how they're protected. And you can just use that flashing to cover that hole so they can't chew there anymore. You can do that as a preemptive if you want to. Um, normally I don't, but it's another thing that you can do. Now this third piece that she's holding is not normally the piece that I normally use commercially when I'm doing it, but it, this piece will use, it's just a different form. I call it drip edge. I don't know what the rest of the world calls it, but just in America, we got 20 different names for the same tool. And what you, this is done mostly for your gutters. And if you've got a shingled roof, you can take the flat edge, slide it up underneath your shingles, and then the um, beveled edge, the edge that is folded down at the 90 degree, can sit in your gutter. Now, if you want some extra security, you can screw that in through the shingles into the OSB and then come across the top of your screws with just some caulking tar and you should be good to go. Normally, I don't screw it in. Just the way that everything's bent in and done, it slides right up and in there and holds just nice. This takes away that construction gap that I talked about earlier um, from your flying squirrels. And it also, because of it being a galvanized aluminum, the gray squirrel or red squirrel cannot get their teeth onto it. And they just sit there and they chew and they can't pinch anything on it. So they can't make, they can't chew to get in they can't make a hole 
be able to gain access to your attic. All of this can be done, like I said, as a preemptive, what we call preventative exclusion. And it also should be done and needs to be done after you've removed squirrels from your dwelling. So now that we talked about the exclusion part, let's go talk about the trapping part. Okay, so you know you got squirrels. So what are you gonna do? Well, with this segment, I'm mostly going to focus on if they're in your barn or if they're in your feed shed or if they're in your house. If they're out getting your fruits and nuts and stuff like that, you can go strictly straight to the cage or you can wait to hunting season. All right, now that I brought that up, a gray squirrel and red squirrel and your fox squirrels and your ground squirrels, they're all considered a game animal. So that means there's going to be a hunting season for them. So that is one way that you can take care of them. They got some very great, powerful pellet rifles out there that you can go out and start popping squirrels and be very successful with it. Now, if the squirrels are in your house, you really have about three options. And we're talking just about the gray squirrel right now, the gray squirrel and red squirrel. Your first one is a lethal option, which is the 110 Cona bear. It's a body grip and trap that we have, we've talked about the Cona bears before in other predator control in the series things. This is just a small version. It's not like the 220 or the 330 that we've talked about in the possum and coon and coyote video. This is a smaller version. This is originally one that was used for muskrats, minks, stuff like that. Um, but now, because we have developed rural areas and squirrels have be get, become more and more of a nuisance inside homes, certain states have started to let us use the 110 Cona bear as a nuisance wildlife removal to be able to catch squirrels. Now, the only thing with the 110 Cona bear is you have to fabricate your own anchor system for your situation. So if you've got a hole, you can run screws like this, set it down there so it doesn't really move that much, but you wanna try to keep it as um, in place as much as possible. So when they hit the trigger, they don't just knock the trap off, they're gonna move the trigger and it's gonna fire the trap and catch them. You can set it down in gutters, over holes, stuff like that. Another way to catch them when they're in your house is what they call an excluder trap. Now this one can be used for both your gray and your flying squirrel. And what you do is you place this over the hole, okay? Like such, so if your hole's here, you can put your flaps in any way, shape, or form to go down over your hole like such to cover your hole now again you may have to get creative and add hardware cloth to be able to cut off any other entry point that he may have when it comes to this because lord knows you don't always get the perfect situation where this lays down completely flat and all this does is when they're coming out they hit that door and then they walk right into the trap. Now, unlike the 110 Cona bear, you can only, this is only successful if he's, that squirrel is in the house. If they're already out, you just stop them from being able to get back in and they're probably gonna chew a hole somewhere else. So if you know you're dealing with a gray squirrel, the best time to put this up is at night. So that way you know they're in there. And then all you do is you get this up on there and then your big cage slides over top of it like so. And then he comes in there and then he's caught in the cage. I only use this in situations where the squirrels I'm dealing with are trap shy and I'm not permitted to use the 110 Cona bear. It's not really my go-to thing because it's just a very big hassle. Now, 
This is your regular small tomahawk trap. Um, I use this mostly for squirrels, but you can catch some of your smaller critters in it also. Now, this is the way I do it. Other guys may tell you, yes, go ahead and put it in the attic, do whatever. But I do not put this cage in the attic until, well, really there's, let me back up as you are. There's really only two reasons why I'll put this in the attic. One, I'm completely done all the exclusion work and I wanna make sure I didn't trap any squirrel in the attic. So I put this up there for a couple of days, heavily baited, because after a couple of days, she's gonna get hungry, she's gonna to come to it anyway. Or two, during my inspection, I found her nest and I found her babies in there. And so I will real quick put the babies in the back of the cage. Mama will come running to them and I'll catch her and, and you're done, that's it. Because remember, gray squirrels, red squirrels, they're extremely territorial. So one mama and however many babies is what you're gonna have, unless your house has been used a couple of years um, in a row because they will let their firstborn female come back and have her first litter in that house. We're in that same area because basically the mom acts like a midwife. Those are the only two reasons why I'll put this cage in the attic. Other than that, I am outside. And the reason being is, is because when she's in your attic, she just wants to take care of her babies and sleep. That's it. She's doing all of her gathering and eating outside. That's where she's more comfortable. So what do you bait it with? Well, Pay attention to your area. What are the squirrels normally eating? Do you have a bird feeder? If you do, load it up with the stuff that's in your bird feeder because you and I both know they're going to that bird feeder to eat. If not, I am a big fan of the black sunflower seeds. Now I'll take some type of a nut extract and I'll put it uh, on the nuts, or I'm, as you were, on the uh, sunflower seeds, shake it up, and then I'll put them either on the pan or in a dish in the back. <clears throat> if the squirrels are very skittish, squirrels are naturally skittish, but if they're even more skittish in your area, you, here's a little trick. You just take your door and you wire it open like such for like 72 hours. You bait it extremely heavy. If you start to see that they're going in the, in the cage and they're eating your bait, come back, remove your wire, set your trap to fire, and you'll start catching squirrels. Okay, so let's switch now from your gray and red squirrel to your flying squirrel. I already said that you could use the excluder and use this cage to catch your flying squirrels. One thing that you do have to do to this cage is wrap it in the quarter inch hardware cloth. That way they can't squeeze through your openings here and go on down the road. Now, there is a very long excluder specifically made just to be able to put that on there where you don't have to put that trap on the back of that excluder, but it's rather pricey and Again, in my opinion, for a homesteader, it's not really worth it. Now, you got flying squirrels in your attic. You got a mess of them just making a bunch of noise and keeping you up, blah, blah, blah. Remember we talked about this trap with your rats and mice? If your state allows, pull this out and use it again and use it for those. They'll come right to it. You bait it with the same thing you would for your mice and rats. You bait it with your peanut butter, with your almond or vanilla extract, and start looking for that toilet up in the attic. Put this all around the toilet. Every one of those holes that I talked about, put this in front of it. And you'll start catching them. Now, some states may require you 
to remove your flying squirrels by what they call exclusion only, and then that's where this excluder comes into play. If you live in one of those states where, where it's exclusion only, I would do my exclusion, leave yourself one spot where this can be easily put up and, and taken down, and I wouldn't even put a cage behind it. I would just let them go on about their way, so that way you don't have to worry about any laws, because if it's exclusion only, more than likely, them flying squirrels are protected in your state, because you guys have a low number, and you don't want to mess with it. Just let it be where they can run out and take off, and they'll go find somewhere else to live. Now, this way may take you, instead of being done in three or four nights, it may take you about two weeks, but sometimes that's just what we got to do with the states that we live in. Okay, so now we know if we got squirrels, how to do an exclusion, and how to do the trapping. Here we go for our final thoughts. All right, now I know it's hard to think of a squirrel as a predator, but with all of the information that we shared with you today, it's pretty easy to understand why I classify a squirrel as a predator. Now, on the flip side of things, the squirrel with it being a game animal, is one of the few predators that you can actually eat. And squirrel meat is really tasty. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of people that hunt them and there's a lot of people that eat them. We eat them. Wayne's Country Living, he eats them. Jane Ol eats them. So, if you've never tried it, I strongly suggest give it a whirl. You'll be relatively surprised on how tasty the squirrel is. Well, that does it for this video. Don't forget to check us out on the web at www.bigbearhomestead.com. You can come over to Facebook and give us the like. You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Don't forget about our live shows twice a week on Mondays and Saturdays as part of the Homestead Network. I'd also like to invite you to go to thehomesteadnetwork.com. Go to thehomesteadnetwork.com. And there you can find a list of all the other amazing YouTube channels that are a part of the Homestead Network. There are days and times that they are doing their live streams. If this video has helped you out, please give us the old thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments regarding this video, please leave them below. I just ask you to be kind and courteous towards others with your comments. And if this is your first time, hey, slide on over there, hit our icon. That'll take you right to the page where you can subscribe. If you guys are, if this is the first time you catch in this series, here at the end of the video, there will be a link to four other videos in the Predator Control in the Homestead series. I invite you to watch them and see if they help. And once again, I want to thank you guys for coming by the Big Bear Homestead. And like always, have a nice day.